the brofist to you all for our wonderful, wonderful people over here at Drama Time. Of our live show on a Friday, the way we're going to finish out this week and have a great old time because we've had a tremendous week. Bobbing into Subnautica, below zero, going deep, racing across the ice, and playing some No Man's Sky. Uh, Hello Games reached out to us after we've been playing our survival games. One of them was obviously watching the PDI and uh, suggested that they, we should check it out. So we did that as well. We've been digging and gathering resources like absolute beasts and i built the absolute crispest base that you've ever seen and i have unfortunately been out of the had to step out of the office briefly in which case chris might have destroyed my base uh, i haven't seen that yet but we will find out on today's show though we have had two responses drama watchers two responses not only will we find out what happened with our wonderful hero who his wife put forward a contract to allow him to game every couple of weeks <clears throat> as long as he gave enough notice otherwise he would receive certain payments uh in the form of actual cash and fellatio uh was the uh agreement that she put forward which we kind of denounced and uh, destroyed very very quickly uh we also have a response from the girl who says she was kidnapped to the eu a story from last week uh, which you might remember, uh, a loving, loving fellow uh, decided that he would just move her character to the EU uh, without asking her. But apparently she liked it very much and it was very sweet and very lovely and oh, oh it was so good. And we had questions. We had many, many questions. So I think we should probably begin with uh oh this is a very short tale from the contract guy is this because of legal lit litigation <laughs> oh shit okay uh let's do the contract first i kind of want to know how this goes um am i in trouble again i don't think so i don't think i should be in trouble like i i did i did my duty of giving you my honest response like i was uh i was doing my due diligence Okay. Yes. I don't know whether legal counsel has been involved here. Mayhaps. I don't know. Uh, very low volume. Did Chris change my volume? Why would it be low? Nothing's changed. I don't know. I don't know. I could do that. Sounds fine. Okay, cool. Um, all right, then. <laughs> Should I sign this update? We resoundingly said no. No, you shouldn't. You should not sign this update. It was a weak deal, in our opinion. Um, it was, honestly, before I read this response, one of the worst possible contracts I have ever seen in my life, and I would never encourage anybody to sign that or take part in it. Uh, so let's see what it says. Hello, Preacher, Bex, and your chat. Thank you for your brutal feedback on the proposed child production agreement. <laughs> an appropriate response is what I would say. I wouldn't say it was brutal. I would say it was an appropriate response. Oh, no. I showed my wife your response. You see, that's on you. That's on you. We were giving advice to you. That's that's on you. That's, that's on you. That's She was displeased especially with your derision of her four is better than three argument <laughs> it was a weak argument it was very weak it was a piss poor argument let's be honest it was a terrible argument chat was correct she does work in financial law okay in light of the destruction you have wrought, <laughs> I am not responsible for problems in the marital home, okay? I am just here to give my point of view as one man living here in the reins of the UK. I'm just giving you my side of it. And these guys are joining in as well, right? That's it. I'm just, just passing it on. Instead of abandoning the contract entirely... My wife proposed amendments. So there's still to be a contract? We're still doing a contract. We're just not dropping the contract business, which is insanity. 
I won't bore you with the details, but basically, the requirement to book gaming sessions two weeks in advance has been reduced to two days. <sighs> also, because she has altered this part of the agreement, I am no longer entitled to sexual favors as a remedy. Instead, she will give me extra game time on other days. No blowjobs, but get to game more. Hmm. Hmm. What game, though? Right? I mean, I, I can't believe the contract still exists. <clears throat> In addition... <laughs> oh god it turns out you totally nailed my wife's unspoken motivation she does indeed want a girl hallelujah hallelujah this is what i'm saying dude it does not end if we get another boy another set of nuts in the house is, is game over because five is better than four did you think about that did you think about that there have been new bonus provisions inserted into the contract that entitle me to order a new PC on an unlimited budget on her credit card if the ultrasound is a girl. How do you have any influence over that? Do you realize we, we, when we reach peak thrust, we basically fire a minigun, right? If you've seen Predator, we basically turn into Jesse the Body Ventura taking down an entire Afghan army, right? We have really no control over that, and neither does she. So why is there a provision on RNG? Kids are RNG, right? You're basically looking, you're like basing a promise on a Titan Forge. You might Titan Forge the kid and get a girl, right? Win's a win. But like, it's not gonna, it's not... There's no way you can give a bonus out for that, right? Yeah, kids are just loot boxes. You don't know what you're going to get out of there. This might sound weird to you. <laughs> it does. It does sound very weird. And indeed, the whole drama time experience has highlighted for me the strangeness of our financial situation. <laughs> My wife's income is 10 to 15 times mine. Then buy your fucking husband a PC. Are you watching? Buy your fucking husband a PC. And stop relying on RNG. Who the fuck are you? Some sort of like fucking... I swear to God, you sound like a gacha game. You do. You sound like Genshin Impact, the fucking real life person. Buy your husband a fucking PC. What's he playing on? Some sort of 2040? Like a noob? Like, is he still on a 1060? Get it together, will you? We've never really blended our finances. She pays the bills and the household costs, but otherwise her money is hers and mine is mine. It works for us, but it does produce an unusual power imbalance in the marriage. Money's tricky. Money's tricky. We we just combine everything. And then Emma spends it. That's how that works. <laughs> I am pleased to report, though, that I have signed the amended contract. Wish us luck on the conception and the baby. Okay, the contract has been signed. Okay. All right, so we do need one other update to this, don't we? We need a picture of the ultrasound. We do. We need a picture. We need... There's another update. Okay, there's another update to this. It is very bizarre. As a final note, as a final note from me to you, it's very weird that there's some contractual stuff going on in your marriage for me. I find that incredibly weird. Incredibly weird. If Emma was to approach me with some sort of horse-related contract or something, she never would, ever. But if she did, I would be 
very, very uncomfortable <laughs> with what the hell is going on. Stories like a copy pasta. Well, <clears throat> well, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about how this tale is somewhat ended. Uh, we have another journey to go on, which we'll find out in approximately, hopefully, nine to ten months' time. Um, we should find out something, maybe even in six months, depending on the, uh, the, the, the process here. Pray? Pray for a boy? No, because if it's a boy, she'll want a girl still. Right? If it's a boy, they'll just want another... She'll want to try again for a girl. I, I'm in this situation. We've talked about adoption for the last two years. True story. I've brought it up several times on stream. I'm not saying this for some sort of drama time reaction. We talk about adoption all the time. We're not going through pregnancy again. And plus, it's RNG. And you know me, I don't like RNG. I don't like RNG. So we're considering adopting. But that way you can guarantee it. You can also be a bit picky about what kind of kid you get. You don't want one of them, like, problem childs, right? I'm looking for, like, uh, I'm, I am. I'm, I'm looking for, like, uh, I don't know, like a, a 2015, 2016 ginge. You know, some, 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 something in that range, you know what I mean? Uh, that's what we're looking for. Something along those lines. If we can, if we can make that happen, uh, then we're in good shape. You know what I mean? So that's, I mean, is it like a catalog? I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> You could dye her hair, more gingers. It'd be weird if we didn't have a ginger kid. It would be weird. Uh, all right, Zai. I don't want like a, a Joffrey Baratheon situation coming up. You know what I mean? Where everybody's pretty suspect, right? I suppose more more modern would be like a Rhaenyra, <laughs> a Rhaenyra Targaryen situation where everyone's just looking over in the corner of the room. <laughs> I don't want that scenario to come up. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> those are some strong kids you've got right there. <laughs> Pretty strong, yeah, strong girl. That's a strong girl. Yeah, I don't want that kind of scenario popping up where I'm like, uh huh, <laughs> yeah, everything's fine, everything's fine. Okay, <clears throat> right. Let's let's continue down this road, shall we? <clears throat> I was kidnapped. Update. I'm not adopting any of you guys. No, I need. We need to, needs to be in the right age group, right? It's got to be in the right age group. Hello, Preach. Hello, chat. I am the author of I Was Kidnapped. I want to clarify some things that were slightly misunderstood in the story. So it's our fault. Uh, we misunderstood. Okay. We misunderstood. All right. Our fault. So let's take it with a moment of salt. It's and see how it goes. First of all, all the free company, me and my friends, were uh, were at is an oh where we were at was a North American server and had a lot of mixed people. So it was not only girls in the free company. We had all genders. Okay, you did say in the story it was a girl free company, I think. So Zarathenia was sending almost all of the free company friends, boys and girls, gifts. Now, why would he do this? His answer... Not everybody knows how to make gill in this game. As long as I can help and make people happy, I would do it. Right. So, I mean, I understand that. I can't make gill in this game. No matter how many times I trade people, they don't give me as much as they used to anymore. Really quite sad. So I understand where they're coming from. It's, it's it's tricky. You've got to send your retainers out. You've got to get the marks. You've got to do all this kind of stuff. It's it's There's a lot of work involved. I also wish to clarify to your audience. <laughs> yes. I did mean that I wanted all the new glams because I was a poor <laughs> at the time. We know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> yes. We do know that it was just joking, but not really. <laughs> I would like all the stuff. All the stuff. I told you earlier in our tale that I don't like flirty guys. That other guy from the drama that happened between my friends did approach me one time and talked flirty and I told him, I only see you as a friend. And then he proved why I don't like talking to flirty guys. His response to that... This makes me vomit. It really does. You creepy bastards. Ah, sigh. 
And here I am thinking about our baby's name. Why would that ever work? Why would that ever work? Honestly. Who types that and presses enter? Jesus Christ. I hated it. I imagine you did. As for though, sweet, sweet, wonderful Xyrathenia, we kept a very strong friendship. And yes, we were very, very close. But there was no confession or grooming from his side. Believe me when I said he was just a very, very kind person. I know they are rare guys who would behave like that, but he is. I mean, I'll leave that up to... I'll leave that to them. <laughs> He's just very, very nice. He's just a very, very nice guy, right? <clears throat> nope. <laughs> no. Look, maybe we're cynical. Maybe we're just cynical. It's possible we're just a bunch of cynical people. Maybe we're basing it off our own experiences. Maybe I'm basing it... I could be basing it on anything. Look, author. I'm simply basing this on 100% of the men I've met. And that's only several thousand. There definitely could be other fish in the sea. That's all I'm basing it on. I, I, like, a very small sample. It, it's probably less than 100,000 people. So... It's, you know, it could be anything. Compared to the size of the planet, you know what I mean, population-wise. While the other free company members or the players at the game would treat me a little bit bad because of my conditions, when Eureka was announced, it was not the content that I could enjoy. Same. I needed ages just to see a single player spawning. How about the mobs and bosses? Everything was laggy. I kept dying and dying. Free company members and friends would invite me to Eureka. But all that I saw is them laughing at my dead corpse that would move while I am dead because I was lagging so badly. So I felt too bad, never wanted to enter Eureka again. And I felt I was just invited to be a joke to my friends. The other free company drama that once happened that the free company leader had in game marriage and we attended her wedding. But after the ceremony, someone in the FC chat said, I wish you all the best, guys. I will be off for a long time. And then they quit the FC completely. One guy responded, Well, if they want us a break, no need to leave the free company since we don't kick people. <laughs> Okay, let me tell this from the top. Let me, this is amazing. This is so good. Okay, <laughs> we've attended the free company wedding of the free company leader. Okay, it's her wedding. It's the free company leader's wedding. As soon as the wedding's finished, someone pipes up in the free company chat. I wish you all the best, guys. I'll be off for a long time. And then they left the free company immediately. Someone kicked in. And if they want to break, there's no need to leave the FC since we don't kick. And that's when the free company leader said, That's my husband. He's mad because I married another person in game. Ah. <sighs> 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 That's, that's cold. That's fucking, I mean, I went to an all Lalafell wedding today, which was a hell of a thing, but that was beautiful, wholesome. One of the best wedding vows I've ever seen in my life. That happened today, just a few hours ago. And this, this was not that. <laughs> this was not that. It was, of course, very, very awkward. Following this, me and Xyrathenia decided to start our new free company and made it all small and private. He invited his sister to the game as well. Oh, he's got the sister? Now, about the account sharing. Obviously, I don't just give my account to randoms. I had known them for two years, and I do trust Xyrathenia. Let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you a little story, a little tale. A little tale that goes along with this. 
Uh, you could go back through literally any drama time. In fact, I think you could possibly watch the same drama time that your first story was on, where a roommate who lived together with someone for several years destroyed that person's account. I could tell you that I had a friend who I played MMOs with for nine years. Nine years. Long before World of Warcraft was even a sperm in the glass cannon. I invited him to our World of Warcraft guild as well. And he stayed there for several years. And then he got mad one day. And he took out somebody else's account. Randomly, without warning. I, I mean, I, let me ask the chat. Would any of you entrust your account to somebody else who you met online? Would you? Would you? Mm -mm. No. You have a lot of trust, Arthur. A lot of trust. A lot of trust. A lot of trust. I certainly wouldn't give it to IRL friends because they are yearning, hungry for things that you have. Let me take you to when I was absent for a month. There was a small incident. I was gone too long that the game actually deleted my house. Oh no. Because if you don't enter the house for, I think, 42 days, you lose it. And I lost mine. But Xyrathenia told me not to worry. And that when I am back, he will get me a new house. The first day I logged back in, he bought me a brand new house. Yes, like you all. I was wondering why he helps me so much. More than any other person. And I asked him why. Why? He said, because I reminded him of himself since he had two strict parents. And he hated that he missed a lot of events to do with friends and exactly like me where I would play less. And he just didn't want me to feel bad. When the transporting incident happened and he moved my character... I wasn't young like chat. So calm down. I was 18. Nearly 19. Oh, then you're all grown up. You're almost old enough to order alcohol. That's amazing. You're all, you're, you're all grown up. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> Sweet summer child. Um... Okay, oh, so go, it continues. <clears throat> I think I wrote this at the start, but wasn't mentioned the EU actually nearest to me than North America. Where do you live? In the ocean? So I had terrible ping in North America, so yes, I was very motivated to move to EU. And yes, PvP is the reason mostly for both of us. But I didn't make it obvious that I wanted to come because I don't want to make him feel bad. I may have made it sound bad, bad by titling the story as a kidnap but to be clear guys there was no bad intentions nor any problems we started our new free company over again i got a new house as well when my friends moved we invited them to join us too yes me and xyrathenia did confess later on confess to what Again, I want to be... What does this mean? It means I think I did confess. Feelings, probably. So we were right. Oh, it definitely is. Because she then clarifies... Okay, she goes on to clarify. Again, to be clear, I was not a minor at the time. Case closed. Or oh, what? Case closed. Or oh, what? It may sound at the start that this was a benefits friendship or something. But when I knew him for a long time, that changed to me and him caring for each other and spending nice time together. Yes, we are together since then. Ladies and gentlemen, he got there. And all it cost was some gill. He got there. Only took him two in-game houses. There are no red flags, no cheats, no dramas, and he treats me very, very well, as always. And we do have future plans, smiley face. 
you very that's the end of the tale <clears throat> i don't mean to push i don't i don't mean to pry i don't but 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 you keep bringing up how you were of age and that you're at the ripe old age of 18 to 19 um how old is he <laughs> just curious I'm, I'm just curious i'm just really curious that's all i've just got an interest if you would say it that way uh i'm just you're very very adamant about your age <sighs> just curious as to his age <laughs> i'm getting the word <laughs> Oh my god, so few people will get that. It's Clinton Baptiste. And he's in the house. He's so mature. I, I we, we 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 we're joking, but we, we do have we have concerns. That's all. We have we have some concerns. And I think rightfully so. We have some concerns. That's all. We have a couple of concerns. <coughs> uh, <coughs> okay. Uh Stealing? We've got th what's Pex called was theft. Using the word they, a degree in English. Oh, I need to know what this is about. A degree in English caused a guild disaster. What? Is it somebody arguing about full stops? I'll say it is. Say it's somebody just corrected punctuation to no end. I need to know that that killed a guild at some point. Did somebody actually a guild to death? I need to know. I really do. A, yeah, like an actual grammar story that kills a guild. I don't think we've ever had that. The Oxford commas. A degree in English. A degree in English. How can this go wrong? <laughs> Hello, preacher in the chat. This is my third time writing into drama time. I've previously written about a crazy stalker German Raylene, a genius level child tank. The story isn't quite as elaborate as the stalker or as bizarre as the genius level child tank, but I think it's one we can all relate to from playing the good old World of Warcraft and some of the more toxic players you meet along the way. Never. No. I wish you all to cast your minds back to the olden times of Battle for Azeroth. Jesus Christ. Are they considered olden times now? I was playing on both the Horde and the Alliance side of the same server, which in itself caused a little bit of drama on my Horde side guild as the raid leader of that guild didn't want to play with filthy Alliance. Only he wasn't being ironic. Oh. <laughs> but he was an ass. I didn't raid with them anyway, so I just ignored it. <laughs> this story, however, happened on my Alliance side Hunter that I have played since vanilla. The Alliance population on my original WoW server was dead, with very few English-speaking guilds and a couple of hanging-on Hungarian raiding guilds. Oh god, was it Ragnaros? Note that you may remember previously about the Hungarian server in the EU that is now Ragnaros, yes. In the past, it was a different server with the Alliance side during Wrath of the Lich King being around 99% Hungarian. Literally seven people at the top level that I ever came across were not from Hungary. But most of these Alliance players migrated to Ragnaros Horde side years ago, which is where I found them. <laughs> so I decided to form my own social guild, mostly for the guild perks and the occasional person to chit chat with, with absolutely 100%, I promise you, no plans to do any organized content at all. And this was made fundamentally clear from the start when everybody joined. We are not a raiding guild or anything like that. This is just an extra chat screen, essentially. Now, the focus of this story wasn't actually a member of our guild. Honestly, he wasn't even on our server. But what did king things off and kick things off initially was a guy who joined our guild. Okay. I remember that he played a paladin. And that one of the first things he asked about was raids, of course. We're not a raiding guild. We don't do it. We have no plans of being a raiding guild. If you want to join a raiding guild, join another guild. Then I suggest you go to a different server because there's no line side raiding guilds. We're not raiding. It's not happening. 
But there's people in this guild, though. Have you noticed there's like 10 people online? And like for a raid, right? You need like 10 people. So what we could do is go to the raid and like kill some monsters. You know what I mean? He would ask me constantly about this to the point it started to actually annoy the other members. It came to a head when he got into an argument with one of the women in the guild and said some shit that was incredibly misogynistic. No, really? I can't remember the specifics, but it upset her, and so he was kicked, and we all moved on with our lives. Good stuff. I can still whisper you, though, can't I, mate? So about that raid, I know I'm not in the guild anymore, but, like, you still have, like, nine people online. So... Why don't you make like a group, right? And then I'll join it. And then we've got 10 people. And that's how we can go on the raid and get some purples. He started to argue with me more and more in whispers. So I just eventually did the only thing that was logical. I just put him on ignore. Moved on with my day. Please just fuck off. A few minutes later, I get another message in the pink. From someone from another server asking me why that paladin had been kicked from our guild as apparently he was now taking it to trade chat and was doing it in a dungeon oh we need a new name <sighs> oh well here it comes oh this still ha <laughs> <laughs> and he had asked this new person enos to intervene on his behalf because he'd been put on ignore to start messaging me now i checked and the paladin was still online so i don't think it was the paladin on an alt but i simply started talking to enos i said look that guy is super toxic we had to be kicking from the guild for the way he behaves. I specifically said they had been toxic and they had been kicked from the guild. So you might be wondering why that is important. Well, Enos' reply confused me slightly. He said, Who are they? I looked at the message confused and then replied they are the paladin their next reply confused me further I, I see but who else was kicked no one else was kicked the paladin was kicked now at this point you would expect the conversation to end but oh no Enos came back telling me that Using the word they in the singular, as they is a plural, is mistaken. I asked Enos where he was from. He replied, actually, I think you'll find that I am from the Czech Republic. I explained that I'm from England. <laughs> and that the word they can absolutely be used in the singular. I said that they is commonly used in English singularly, and that it's just a quirk of the English language. Enos was pissed. <laughs> Enos is pissed. I have you know, dear boy, I have a degree in the English language, and at, at no point have we ever been taught that they can be used in the singular. I didn't understand where this was going. I didn't understand where this could possibly end. And I just thought I'd be polite. Why not? So I told him politely, while at this point wondering why I'm fucking bothering, that, that you can, it's fine. And I then decided to go the extra step. I googled it. And I linked him a web article about the singular use of they. 
So why is it on drama time? You might be confused as to how me using they singularly, a pretty common thing in the British language, could result in what is quite possibly one of the most toxic outbursts I have ever seen. <laughs> This moment was only beaten by the time someone in Rocket League told my teammate they were going to slit their throat and make their mother watch them bleed out. <laughs> Creative. No homophobia. We'll take it. We'll take it. That's all right. That's all right. No homophobia. No bigotry in there. Just some nice, clean torture. That's all right. That, that, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, it was all set off by this next question. So why would you use they singularly? I just explained to you, it's common, it's normal. It's just often used if you don't know the gender of the person you're talking about. The mention of gender is what set off our Czech Republic friend. It was the most apocalyptically mental string of homophobic, transphobic, and basically any other phobic sli- That's what it was. You said they, and they instantly were like, you woke piece of shit! I eat coal! I'm all over it! Wokeness! Fuck you, dude! Fuck you, dude! Fuck you, dude! What I take your shirt off! What I take your shirt off! Yeah, I will! I won't obviously put this into text as you couldn't read it anyway. <laughs> but simply put, it was bad. It was one of the worst outpourings I've ever seen in WoW, and it was all over the fact that I used the word they. As you might expect, I blocked him. And went to move on with my day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we just, we gotta, another ignore. This is a busy day. I've never put this many people on ignore in the first day. But it would not end. Oh no. Enos was gigapist. Enos started changing characters. No less than three. He started by calling me a coward and a craven. Still <laughs> yeah, a coward. Only a pussy would run from someone yelling all this shit. You pussy. What a coward. Do you even eat steak? Bet you don't. Bet you don't, dear. Bet you don't. Still yelling homophobic and transphobic slurs at me until I guess he got bored and went to drown some kittens or something. It's hard to tell what he was up to, but it wasn't studying English. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what the moral of this story is. <laughs> it's just something that happened to me. That makes sense. I guess if you kick someone from a guild, don't reply to the random stranger who starts asking you about it. Or maybe I should contact every university in the Czech Republic to make sure their English department know that they can in fact be used singularly to save some other poor soul from the wrath of Enos. I shudder to think what will happen to Enos when he discovers further pronouns. A prayer, ladies and gentlemen. A prayer. Hopefully Enos will be okay, and we can get through this. We got there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my little tale, I think. A slightly draw drama story, I guess. <laughs> oh, Jesus, fuck. Uh, well, Enos, you need to uh, brush up on your English. I mean, I can just tell you. Okay, we've got Fraud. I haven't, read, I haven't checked the titles because obviously I had to go out. Uh, a story of betrayal in RuneScape and a guy who had real nightmares because of Sea of Thieves. I'm going with that one. <laughs> sea of Thieves? <laughs> what gives you nightmares? I mean, to be fair, the dudes did shoot my dog out of a cannon. That was pretty scary. Oh god, this comes with photographic evidence. They provided photograph specs? Okay. I don't know where this story tells, but we have some... Uh, we have photographic evidence to go along with this. Uh, okay, we need imbued. Our boy imbued. Many years around with that lad. Clarine. Same. Got some old schoolers here. Uh, and, uh, okay, come sail with us. Come sail with us. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Hello, preacher of the chat, and warm greetings from Team Slovenia. Ahoy, sailor. Recently, I've begun binge-watching your vids, especially drama time, and I decided that it would be a good idea to write to you for the traditional yearly entry. 
a second anniversary of when I first written for yours and no chats entertainment. While my last story involved a good amount of drama with players that could be politely described as weird, and also sharing some trauma that came from a boat game that was responded with some light-hearted trolling by you. Uh, I come with another tale. I come to you with an uplifting tale. One that I believe everyone can appreciate. I am, of course, talking about the Redemption Arc and a sequel to a story I had sent in. So I hope you enjoy it. First, a little prologue. Life since I sent you my tale a year ago has been good. The winter time was the hardest emotionally, as I'm sure it was for everyone. But it did start to get somewhat better in around March. During January, I managed to give you a second draft of collection of stories. In February, I started uploading videos to YouTube's at a steady weekly pace and had found some employment at a rather steady job that allowed me to get some cash money into my dragon's hoard and most importantly me and my girlfriend are still together and in love i was content in my life as things were going quite well but as you know how life can be there are often times some things that just just, just do not quite sit well with you in the back of my subconscious mind there was something that festered and made itself a constant reminder a game that I swore to myself that I would never play again. I remember this story. You were playing Final Fantasy XIV and some, uh, you joined a free company where some people played Sea of Thieves and they like bought the game for you and were like forcing you to play it and you didn't like it. Right? Was that generally the idea? It was something like that. Where his free company would just not fucking stop hassling him to play Sea of Thieves and he didn't like it. <laughs> okay. I am of course talking about Sea of Thieves. A game that I despised due to the absolutely terrible first impression given to me by the man who in the story went by the name of West. And the fact that the game looked like the ideal adventure game turning out to be just rust with a kid-friendly demeanor. Yes, while I did for the most part keep the game out of mind, I still would sometimes dream about it. I mean literally dream about it. I would dream about a beautiful ocean, me sailing, treasures in the captain's cabin, and of course getting to scraps with other players while shouting how much I hate them. In fact, my girlfriend, Clarain, she often teased me for effectively being a drama queen because of whatever hang-ups I had in regards to Sea of Thieves and starting to dream about it. When was the last time any of you dreamed of a video game? I haven't dreamed of a video game in a very, very long time. Like, I can't remember when I did. I can't remember. Like, literally, I can't remember. I have to admit... Even now, as I write this to you, I am not sure what it is about the game that caused me to have dreams, or why I'd end up starting to get hung up over it and it's starting to plague my thoughts. Sea of Thieves? <laughs> you just sat there brooding about Sea of Thieves, a game you don't even like? <laughs> You're having dreams about it? What the fuck? <laughs> you gotta let go, right? Let go of that bone. It's gotta go. The game looks nice. You don't dream about it, though, right? And you don't sit there like, fucking Sea of Thieves. Like, what's, what's going on? Are you okay? No, not Sea of Thieves. It was about two months ago. And I decided what might help. Oh, no. This is like, wow, quitters. I decided what might help me alleviate my dreams was to start lurking the game's official forums. You just became MMO champion. That's what you did. That's what you did. You just became MMO champion. You left. You gave it up. But you couldn't stop. You couldn't stop. That's where you went. You were on the forums. You were giving it your all. I admit I am kind of a polite dickhead. While not being overtly insulting towards anyone. Passive aggressive. Outside of calling the development team being comprised of incompetent Reddit moderators. You don't even play the game. You're slagging the dev team off. You've played it twice, if I remember, for like two hours. And you're calling the dev team incompetent Reddit moderators. Which earned me a temporary suspension from the forums. You got banned from a gaming forum for a game you don't play. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Otherwise, I was just a skulker who'd jump on a thread here and there, voices pessimism, 
and make an open remark with how he'd wish the game would meet a fiery end. Why? 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 <laughs> Just why? My rage, of course, caught the attention of someone. A man named Imbued. Funny story with him. We actually spoke once before about a year ago when I was still in my state of irrational frenzy over this game. And the conversation was not very pleasant. This time it wasn't exactly steady either. But to his esteemed credit, he gave me a chance. We talked a bit in DMs. We managed to find common ground. We found some mutual understanding. You don't even play it. You've been on this forum for over a year. You played it for like two hours. You've been on the forum for over a year. You're now having heart to hearts with the other members of the community. We were able to bond. I think it helped that we both had a mutual love for Lord of the Rings and a hatred for Rings of Power. I like Rings of Power. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Well, I hate it. He just doesn't care for it. He decided that he would reach out to me and offered me a gateway. He said he had the red pill. Please don't. Where does this go? Where does this go? It, where have you sent me, Bex? Have you tied me to a fucking treasure chest and thrown me to the briny deep? Is that where I'm going here? He said he had the red pill, as Morpheus from the Matrix might say. Don't use the phrase red pill. It's really bad now. <laughs> they, they took that leather-clad movie and made it bad. <laughs> he offered that he would play Sea of Thieves with me. If I ever ended up wanted to give it a second chance. I have to admit it was a tempting offer. Especially considering how the game had been slowly drawing me in once more. And yet, I had internal turmoil. I didn't want to play the game. I thought the game was shit. But on the other hand... I had been making YouTube videos. So it might be content. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening with you and I'm really worried about you. I'm desperately worried about you. Bex, can I get a confirmation? How long did this guy play the game in the original story? It was twice, right? Wasn't it for like an hour? It was something like that, right? It was something along those lines. If we can, get, can, we, can you refresh me about what happened? I think it was twice he, he jumped in and left after like an hour. I think like an hour or less. Okay, but this has been going on for a year. You've been active on the forums, banned from the forums, and now you're dreaming about it. It is why I must admit, everyone, that with a heavy heart, I went to the Steam page... To buy the game. On Game Pass. Dummy. <laughs> I tried buying it when it was on sale. Except. I wasn't able to purchase it. But you see the game had been bought already. And it registered to my account. So a second purchase is not possible. So just install it then. Right. Just click the install button. Or. <laughs> at that moment i thought to myself rejoice but playing the game will not be possible oh because he refunded it he removed it from his library be of steam support okay okay that makes a lot of sense to me okay okay cool he removed it from it all right it's fine yeah he removed his he removed it from his steam account <clears throat> then I actually read the rest of the notice and my joy was replaced with mild disappointment. I am in fact able to reinstate the game on my account just by going to Steam support. But a valuable lesson had been learned at the very least. Steam doesn't make you buy games fresh if you remove them from your library. 
So at least the website isn't completely evil mega corporation. Lord Gaben, praise be. Praise be. Now then, I had Sea of Thieves again. <laughs> this is so dramatic for Sea of Thieves. <laughs> it's got Captain Jack Sparrow in it and silly skeleton men. <laughs> what are you doing? It's so... <laughs> <laughs> you can just play. You can play the fucking what's it called? I can't remember. <laughs> just, just, I don't get it. It's getting so weird. Uh, <sighs> as the bar gradually, the download bar gradually filled up. <sighs> the accordion. Yeah, you can just play accordions and stuff. A thought occurred to me. If I will be playing this game, then it would be a good idea to gather a crew. At least people that I know that I could rely on. Trustworthy swaps. You wanted to roleplay, didn't you? That's what you wanted. I did have a handful of contacts that I knew I could call upon, but most of them are either single-player gamers or just don't have an interest in Sea of Thieves. But I found one. My beloved Clarain. He's going to come into play. Clarain has mostly been an MMO gamer and also a MOBA player. So she's quite familiar with how things go in the world of PvP. But she never has been much for first-person games, let alone Melee. But it was in thanks to me introducing her to Vermintide 2 and Payday 2 that she got a good feel for how to work the cameras and really enjoyed it. I was admittedly surprised to hear that she was willing to play the game. And she, her response was, I kind of want to know what you keep fucking dreaming about and shit and like stewing over and getting bad up forums about. Of course she's interested. Yeah, I'll play. What the fuck is all the fuss about? I really want to know. While she was getting around to buying and installing Sea of Thieves, I had some moments to myself. I was in game, so I decided I would boot it up. Get used to the controls, see what the map looked like, and as I did, I landed face to face with my pirate. Seemingly grinning at me as if he was knowing, expecting me to return. You know, if I was going to be playing the game again, I thought that there were a few things that would have to be done differently this time. Firstly, I changed my character's appearance. I took off all the clothes he currently had and replaced them with some more humble clothes, a grey shirt, fingerless gloves and brown boots. I did keep the pants, though. They were sweet. Also, a change of hairstyle was in order to one that made me look a bit more presentable. Seeing as there were also ships that one could buy in Captain, I decided I should buy one for myself, which would turn out to also be a very good idea in the end. I decided to name and customize it after my feathered best friend to serve as a memory of the good times that I had with my little feathered Matt ragamuffin. Portrayed below are the image of him and the ship's plaque. Okay, uh, for our audio listeners, uh, we have <coughs> a bird on two boxes of milk and what appears to be the Iron Throne of Kettles. Why am I showing you? Your foot's, what's happened? Help! What you say it has? There we go. Got it. <laughs> I am a pro streamer. Chris buried it down at the bottom. All right, we have a parrot on top of Lakotan Khan. I assume that's milk. And there's the Iron Throne kettle. All right, we've got it. We've got a wild, good job he wasn't doing it. Nut milk. Okay, we've got some Alpro nut milk. But it's a cute little bird. It's a cute little bird is what we've got. So... Oh, this is kind of sweet, actually. I assume the bird was called Oscar. So there's the front of the ship. He named the ship Oscar's Memory. Redeemed? Redemption story? Maybe? Redemption story? <laughs> Since I'm going for an outer image revamp, it would be wise to do one for my attitude as well. Where I would try my best not to get angry at people and curse their very souls to damnation. And as I had played, I must admit, I started to enjoy myself. 
My first session of Sea of Thieves had me dive into an unfamiliar mermaid shrine and grab some things, albeit not the most effectively, and then going back for an outpost. Only to find another ship already docked there. But they were commanded by a fine crew. The other pirates of the seas greeted me as friend, asking me if I was friend. I tried to reply to him, but my microphone wasn't being registered by the game, so I typed. I offered him a pineapple as peace. I come bearing pineapples. And then he proceeded to dance and play music for me. It seemed like a nice person. A good person. A person that I didn't think I would ex ever meet in Sea of Thieves. I sent him a message thanking him for being the first person that I have ever met in this game after a return. And for getting a heartwarming introduction. I should mention a bit more about that. The process of finding people to play with. There were certainly times and instances where I would meet someone and have a pleasant time with them. Such as two ships where I helped them in taking on an event or an appearance of enemies and let them keep all the treasure. Because I'm a pleb like that. Yeah, you fucking split the treasure. What? Hoping that me showing myself to be a friendly and helpful player would allow me to be invited for their play sessions. I have to say that didn't work at all. As many of them had decided to not to call me back. Oh, oh no. <laughs> they never called me back. After my offer to play with them. Even imbued, as I mentioned at the start of this tale, the man who extended the hand in camaraderie to me never called back. Later, I found out he'd just been busy. But even when he wasn't, our schedules weren't aligned. Was he ghosting me and avoiding me? I can't say it was because of that, but it did leave me a bit bummed that the person who had made me reinstall the game wouldn't play with me. There was also someone else that I met that offered to play with me. Seemed like such a nice person. But midway through, <laughs> midway through our conversation, it rubbed me the wrong way when he decided to talk to me about how evil the South of America is. I had friends in Texas, and they were nice, honest people. I just nodded politely and ran away and left them there. But eventually, Clarain joined me. We had so much fun. At first, I was worried how she'll handle certain things, such as combat or swimming. But she got the hand of things pretty quickly. I felt proud seeing how she was landing shots on skeleton ships and swimming underwater without getting disorientated. Our probably the most proudest moment was catching her first fish after trying many, many times. I thought that I would now share with you some of the days that I had documented where anything interesting happened to give you a look. As to, so ultimately, wait, to be clear, after a year of seething and raging and anger about a sea of thieves, you then just tried it again and had a good time with friends. You feel like there's a dark turn coming? Okay. <clears throat> Day four. Alright, we're done soon. Close the door. Day four. It was a community day, so there was a lot of gold to be made. And it was a good time. I went open crew and there were some ships that were good. Well, there's not so much. Overall, I got a lot of ancient coins, the premium currency of the game, as a lot of the spawn rate was boosted that day. Day six, I was attacked by a ship of four crew, and I believe this is where my change in character truly shined. Instead of raging and cursing them, I greeted them as gentlemen, trying to make a joke of the situation. One of them certainly giggled as he shot at me. I figured my ship was going to sink, but was surprised to see that they fixed my boat and just stole my stuff. Fair enough, I thought. Wasn't really doing anything that needed cannonballs or the like. One of the crew members even gave me a piece of shark and apologized for robbing me blind. <laughs> nice pirates. You gotta love them. That experience did leave me wondering. What is it exactly that made me respond in a more relaxed demeanor rather than angry or fury? Either my time away from the game had allowed me to mature, relax a bit more. You got banned from the forums. That is a no. Or just me doing videos has given me a different perspective and made me react to things with a bit more decorum. Though I admit there are still times that I shout a bit, 
Not because I'm angry, but because I panic when being shot at. Day 10, another fantastic evening with my girlfriend. We sailed the seas, plundered many treasures, had a grand old time together, feeling happy and in love. It was also the day that she tried fishing on a more active level and became an expert fisherman. We went through some forts, mermaid shrines, sailed around digging up treasures, having the best time a young gaming couple can have. And now as I sit here writing this to you, I'm left wondering. After effectively doubling my playtime within a week, do I now love the game that gave me nightmares? Do I feel the same kind of admiration as all of those people on the forums who were saying they were having fun? <laughs> that, you, that caused you so much rage. I'll be honest. It's hard for me to say that I do. Well, I will no doubt say that I'm having a good time with my girlfriend playing together. Oh, here it comes. Sailing and fighting skeletons, sirens and ghosts. And I guess we'd also invite the opportunity to get more active in some proper naval warfare. I still don't like the game. <laughs> then stop playing it, man. What are you doing? <laughs> How? How? How can a game of this kind of calming, relaxing magnitude with some good content to be done have PvP as a thing? Especially since both me and Clarine know that PvP attracts awful, bloodthirsty players. Though I still would very much invite the opportunity to get into some naval warfare with other players. I believe that was possible in the arena. In spite of all its problems, you were still able to at least get some fighting done there. At the end of it all, I must ask you this. Have I found redemption? I leave you in the chat to judge me as you wish. All I know for myself is that I'm at least having a good time for now. I'm happy sailing the seas with a woman at my side and my parrot at the other. And conquering foes of skeletons and ghastly nature. And with that, I ask you again. Nopers, I mean... We don't get why you care so much. Like, at all. We don't understand why you care this much about this game. We don't get it. We're permanently in a, like, a state of confusion. It's just Sea of Thieves. That's it. It's nothing else. There's 8 trillion games out there. Former WoW player asking this question. Yeah, like, let's just move on. It's only a game. Why you have to be mad? I agree. I agree. Well, I'm going to love you and leave you. My children are hungry. I have a haircut awaiting. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I can almost get the old emo thing going, guys. I'm almost there. You like this? What? Discord? Oh. Ah. Oh. Hmm. I have a PC to give away. An extremely good PC. A very, very good PC worth many, many thousands of pens. Pounds. To one of you, and apparently, let me double check this. They're here. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. We'll give the announce. The winner of our big AMD giveaway with Scan is the Plump Panda. Mr. Daniel. The Plump Panda. He was here a couple of minutes ago, apparently. He might still be floating around. But the Plump Panda, you are our winner. You will be getting called and contacted. You have won yourself a PC from the back of our September Sub Fiesta. Congratulations, my dude. You are getting an extraordinarily powerful computer. Absolutely top of the line. We can thank Scan and AMD for putting it together for us. It's going to be as... It's even more powerful than the PC that I built on stream a little while ago. It is a big, big beast. We hope to have many more giveaways for you coming up. But the Plump Panda, a 34-month subscriber... 34 month subscriber been with us for a long long time congratulations my friend uh, and i hope you enjoy it i'd love to see some pictures of it when it arrives and one of my team will be in contact with you 
Not me, but congrats. Yes, it's not you, but it's congrats. And thank you, everybody, for that. I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you, Brixie. Thank you very much. Um, have a great weekend. I will not be streaming the uh, live letter tomorrow. It's at 4.30 a.m. I have my kids this weekend. I will not be doing that. We will check through it on Monday as normal. I won't be here live at 4.30 a.m. Um, I'm going to take my kids to do something for the weekend while it's just daddy time and there's no, uh, no mummy around so I could do boys stuff. So I'm going to go and do boys stuff. But other than that, be good. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you as soon as I possibly can. All right. Bye everybody.